In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. A few days ago, I was preaching a series of services for a very well-known preacher among us. We went out to dinner after one of the services, and he began to tell me this story. He said, Brother Prado, he said, I was pastoring a church, and there was a lady in that particular church who was very complicated. She was very needy. Prior to living for God, she had gotten herself in quite a lot of trouble and lived a very sinful lifestyle, and after being saved, she struggled with the guilt and the condemnation, and her mind was just always a blur. He said every service she would pull me over and want to talk and, uh, and explain to me her mental turmoil and her anguish and, and uh, see if I could comfort her in any way. He said this went on for several years. He said there was one particular day where I was cleaning the church, doing some yard work and some repairs on the outside of the church. and had a couple of the men from the church with me. He said, I stared across the field, and there she was, and she was heading in my direction. And she had already garnered a reputation for uh, being kind of needy. And so the men in the church kind of knew what was about to happen, and he said, I just went ahead and put the paintbrush down and uh, cleaned up, and because I knew I was going to have to talk to her. And so... She asked the pastor if she could speak with him, and just as she had so many other times, she began to just pour out uh, her problems. He listened, he prayed, he counseled. He said that when she turned around and began to walk away, the Lord spoke to him and said, you will never see her again. And he said it was so distinct, it was so unique. He said, in fact, I can't tell you that God has ever spoken to me like that about anybody I've ever pastored. He said, but I knew as she walked away from me that that was going to be the last time I ever saw her. He said several weeks later, a couple came into my church. They were young. They were upwardly mobile, very affluent. He said the, they, they didn't spend but just a few weeks in church and they were ready to get baptized. He said the gentleman came out of the water speaking in tongues. He said it was really quite beautiful. He said after he got the Holy Ghost and was, you know, drying up and uh, getting back into his, uh, getting his composure back, he, he asked if he could speak with me. And uh, I told him, certainly. He said, Pastor, he said, I want you to tell me everything. Tell me everything. He said, I can tell you people are different. He said, you, you dress different. You, you preach different. You, you, you talk differently. He said, I know there's some rules around here. He said, I want to know all of them. And so the pastor, in really in the best interest of the man, just tried to kind of skirt the issue. And he said, no, 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 don't, don't play games with me. He said, tell me everything. He said, I want to line up, and I want to line up now. And this is not part of my message, but that's a great way to be. Amen. I... That's a great way to be. We'll try that again. That's a great way to be. You might as well jump in with both feet. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so the pastor said, fine, I'll let you have it. And just begin to go down the verses and went through everything from uh, modesty to, uh, to doctrine to baptism to the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You name it, the whole gambit. The man later on became his assistant, preached, went off, and started his own church. He told me, Brother Prado, I've never in my life had a better saint, ever. He said, and one day, 
I, I became overwhelmed with how great this guy was. He had his problems, but overall, he was just faithful. His family was faithful. They gave to the ministry, not just finances, but energy and time and of themselves. He said they were the most wonderful people I've ever pastored in all my life. He said, and there was, there was this day where I just became overwhelmed with their commitment, and I just began to weep and to cry. He said, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm paying you back for all the time you spent with that lady. And God has dealt with me today to talk to you about a big payback. And God has told me to tell this church that there's a payback coming your way. I'm preaching to people that have been going through hell and high water. And I want you to know there's a payback coming your way. I'm preaching to people that have been coming when their kids stop coming. You got a payback coming your way. I'm preaching to people that have stood faithfully by your pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. When other people have betrayed him and backstabbed, there's a big payback coming your way. I'm preaching to people right now that you gave when you didn't have to give there's a big payback coming your way it's coming tonight it's coming this week it's coming this month uh, i'm not over i'm not dramatizing this i'm not trying to hype you up i'm here to give you the word of the lord uh, there is a big payback come on if you believe god come on in fact the Bible says that he that cometh to God must believe that he is uh, and that he is a rewarder uh, of them that diligently seek him. I'm preaching to the diligent folks. Uh, I'm preaching to the diligent saints. Uh, I'm preaching to the diligent young people that have kept coming to church uh, even when your siblings backslid, uh, even when the youth group was messing up. Uh, amen. There's a big payback uh, coming your way. Come on, let's magnify the Lord for about 10 seconds. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost from the top of my head to the bottom of my I know this might sound cliche and overtly simplistic, but you listen to this preacher when I tell you, God is faithful. 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 God is. Come on. I feel a spirit of reciprocity in here. I feel like God's going to give back what's been given to him. I feel like God is going to press it down. Shake it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. yes. I want everybody here to know that what's going to happen in your life is going to be tailored specifically to you. It's not going to be a general blessing. It's not going to just be some abstract thing. It's going to be tailor-made to your needs, to your situation, to your prayers. Uh, you are going to get specific prayers. Come on, somebody. I'm feeling God all over me right now. I don't even feel very good, but I know when God's touching me, and I can feel the Holy Ghost from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel once I put the mic down, but right about now, I feel like God is trying to get through to somebody and inform them. Uh, I've heard your prayer. And I'm going to answer A to Z and everything in between. Come on, why don't you run on that? Why don't you shout on that? Why don't you dance on that? Yes, 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 yes. For all the promises of God are yea and amen. They're yea and amen. They're yea and amen. Woo! Come on. Let's marinate in that praise right now. Come on. Just let that get a hold of your hands. Just let that get a hold of your arms as you wave them. Let that get a hold of your feet as you run. Let that get a hold of your throat as you shout. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is 
This is the gospel truth that I'm telling you right now. The other day we were driving down the street. Amen. And uh, some of you might know, we, my wife and I have started a church. And uh, we're just doing our best to love Jesus and do the will of God before he comes back. And uh, we were driving down the road and I saw, I saw a van and I told my wife, I said, we need a van just like that. I said, that's exactly the van I want right there. And uh, I began to pray and I told Jesus the name, the make and the model. Come on, I, ain't, I am not nervous. I, I don't care if there is a bunch of quack preachers that preach prosperity doctrines. I'm not going to let some quack preacher make me throw the baby out with the bathwater. My God is a provider and he will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And he is not bothered by me telling him what I want, what color, when, how. Come on, come on. He's got an ear, I got a mouth. I'm a talk. I'm a talk it out. I'm a talk it out. I'm a articulate. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. This is the truth. I told my wife, I said, that's the van I want for our church. I started praying about it. I didn't pray but two days. Amen. And on the second day, God said, I'm going to buy you that van. I got up. I told my wife, I said, God's going to buy us that van. She looked at me like, okay. I was preaching, I'm not going to say where, I'm not sure he wants to be named, but I was preaching a revival, and I was getting up and I was saying my good nights, it was the very last service of the revival, and the pastor said, son, he said, I know you're starting a church, he said, do you need a van? I said, absolutely, I need a van, said, I've been praying about one, he says, well, go buy it and send us the bill. I'm telling you, I was driving that thing yesterday, picking people up. Dropping people off, loving Jesus, shouting for the... It's a big payback, honey. It's a big pay... You know why I'm not afraid to ask God for what I want specifically? Because I've cried a lot for it. I've put a lot of skin in the game for it. Uh, amen. I'm not playing with Jesus. Uh, I try to do my best to serve him. Uh, and I try to do my best to please him. Uh, and I try to do my best to check into church uh, and put my heart into it. Uh, amen. And God loves that kind of stuff. Uh, and God somebody. Amen. I'm not just here wasting my time. I'm here to serve the Lord. Amen. And he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and according... Woo! I feel good right now. Hey! Oh, hallelujah. God will answer your prayer. He'll, he'll tailor, he'll tailor, he'll, he'll tailor it just for you. One of the most fascinating scriptures in the Bible is found in the book of Revelation where the apostle John says, towards the very last chapters, he says that he saw the new heaven, the new Jerusalem, he said, and there was no more sea. John had spent so much of his life on an island. And I know we think Bahamas and Hawaii brother, this was the island of Patmos. There was thugs and thieves, murderers and rapists. And there he was, amen, dropped off in the middle of all that garbage. And uh, while we might think of the ocean as something romantic, it probably was to him nothing different than a jail cell. To him, he probably detested the sound of it. He probably got to the point where he thought, I don't ever want to see another wave, another ocean. I don't ever want to smell salt water ever again in my whole life. God, get me off this island. And God said, John, I got a big payback for you. John, when you get up here to heaven, I got a little piece of heaven for you where there is no sea, where there is no ocean. I've seen your tears. I've seen your crying. I've seen your anguish right down to the things you hate the most, right down to the things that work your nerves, right down to the things that make you anxious and give you despair. And John, you're getting a payback. Amen. And I'm going to take care of it, uh, even to the most minute detail. Uh, I'm preaching to somebody right now that when God gives you your payback, uh, there's going to be some stuff you'll never struggle with again. There's going to be some stuff that'll never come in your house again. There's going to be some stuff that's never going to come in your marriage again. There's going to be some thoughts that'll never come in your mind. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. 
You know, when Job went through his trial, it was horrendous. It was horrible. He lost everything but his wife. But the Bible says that when it was all said and done, God doubled him up. God gave him a big payback. Amen. God gave him a big payback. And the only thing the Lord asked of Job is to pray for his friends. Amen. That almost derailed him in the process. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to somebody right now. Amen. You don't need to get bitter. And if you're bitter tonight, amen, go ahead and just throw your hands up. Forgive everybody who's dogged you out, talk bad about you. Amen cast shade on you while you were going through the trial of your life, bring up your offering and shout. Bring up your offering and pray for your enemies. Bring up your offering and pray for them that despitefully use you and abuse you. And I'm telling you, there is a blessing, a payback, a reward, a re oh, come on. A reclaiming, a, a, oh, Jesus. a repair, a redemption, a Come on, come on, come on. I feel the healing touch of the Lord in here right now. I feel the gift of healing working in this house right now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, we need to give this about five seconds right now. Because somebody is going to be lifting their hands and praising God. And pain is going to leave their body. Pain is going to leave their... In the name of Jesus. In the... Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Just just three more seconds. Three more seconds. He told a bosanda da baba. He told a la da bosa. He had a la 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 bosa. He had a la 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 bosa. Here. Right here. Right here. I remember several years ago. I had a friend who had been through the trial of his life, Brother Anderson. I'm talking about people dying. I'm talking about months on end of weeping and sobbing, brokenness, dread, despair, questioning. I told him, I said, let's go to No Limits. He's like, yeah. I was like, no, let's go. Yeah. I said, bro, we need to go. It's like, all right, let's go. He was sitting on that side of the building. I got up and I walked towards that side of the building. And as I was walking to that side of the building, I saw a man sitting in the back in a leather jacket. And I recognized him. Uh, he was our mutual friend. But he had been very backslid for several years. And he just happened to come that night. Uh, in the middle of the conference when we were all here. Uh, he has... My friend won him to God. And he did my friend dirty. Hallelujah. Now, he did my friend wrong. Uh, it wasn't good. And... Uh, the man has since died. He died a premature death. Very sad story. He has passed away. But this encounter was a total God thing. It happened right here. The big payback. And we saw each other. We're like, hey, man, what's up? He's like, hey, what's up, bro? I was like, you know, so-and-so's right over there. Blessed are the peacemakers. I'm going to get my blessing and tell you to apologize. <laughs> That's good preaching. He, he walked over and I was just watching him he walked over he started talking to him and they, they just unpackaged everything I mean they started crying they started just going through all the motions and uh, he told him uh, my friend told this gentleman all the, the horrible things that had happened and, and he said man that's, that's, that's tragic that's horrible 
And that was that. We just kind of didn't think much of it. We went home. And just a few weeks later after we went home, my friend got a knock on the door. And uh, I'll just, I'll give you a little more detail to this. I'm trying to be as obscure as I can, but uh, his wife had died. She had died in the home. Uh, it was very tragic. It was not a good thing. And he got a knock on his door, and it was this guy's ex-wife who was very wealthy. I mean wealthy. The woman had money. And she said, hey, I heard you saw so-and-so down in Sacramento. I said, yeah, I did. He said, he told me that your wife died. He said, yeah, she did. She said, it must be hard living in this house with all these memories. He said, yeah. You know, it's not until you've been through something in your own home that you realize that just the color of a painted wall can drive you nuts. Smells and odors and objects can provoke such anxiety and angst in you. It's, you just have to be there to know. She said, I'll tell you what. She said, I got a crew coming over tomorrow. She said, they're going to remodel your whole house. They remodeled over $100,000 worth. Amen. A big payback. A big payback. I, I, am, I am preaching to somebody right now. You have got to take the limits off God. You have got to realize that God is watching the whole thing. You know, in the middle of your trial, the devil will try to work you over and make you feel like heaven's made of brass and God ain't listening. And God didn't see that. And God didn't see that. Who in the world ever told you that God was blind? Who in the world ever told you that God was deaf? Who in the world ever told you that God doesn't take good records. Who in the world ever told you that God is not into the most minute uh, details? Uh, I'm telling you right now, God will give up. I'm preaching it. You need to let this, you know what? I understand there's people here. You've been through some stuff, but you, you cannot let that stuff, amen, get you under it. Uh, you got to get on top of it. You got to get on top of it and you got to let everything that's happened to you know, you know what? My God is good. Uh, my God is faithful and my God answers prayer. And I'm, and I'm, I'm expecting a big pay. Come on, go, 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 go. Oh, come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Here's what, here's what the Lord spoke. He said, I'll restore unto you the years. Everyone say years. years. Not the year. A lot of times we settle with just the idea or the notion, man, that'd be great if God would just let me take 1987 back. God said, I'm trying to do more than that. I'm trying to give you back the year. I'm trying to give you back 87, 88, 92, 95, 90. Come on, somebody. You ain't hearing me. God's trying to. And here's the powerful thing. He didn't say, I'll give it back to you in years. You'll get back in, you'll get back in one year. Uh, amen. What's been taken from you throughout the years. Uh, you'll get back in one harvest. Uh, all the stuff that's been taken from you. Yes, yes. Come on. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Don't you lock up. Don't you let the devil. Vamos, vamos. Alaba a Dios. Dios te va a repagar por todo lo que has perdido y por todo lo que el diablo te ha quitado. Oh, come on, somebody help me right there. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the confirmation of the word of the Lord. Here's the truth. Everybody takes a hit. Everybody. 
body. Jesus said, I am the brand, I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, every branch that doesn't produce fruit gets cut off. And he said, you know what the ones who do produce fruit get? They get cut too. Nobody shouted on that. See, there's actually a point in your walk with God, in your relationship with God, where taking a hit will make you more fruitful. Yeah. Proverbs says, rebuke a wise man, he'll yet be wiser. He actually grows by not being pranced around. See, that's the problem with some folks. They can't hardly get corrected, told anything straight up, can't keep it 100 one. They get offended, backslide every other month. And God's saying, I'm trying to get you to grow. I'm trying to prosper you and pay you back like you ain't never had. Jesus says, I cut off the bad branches and I even cut the good ones. And when I cut the good ones, the good ones bring back more fruit. More fruit. I'm preaching to some good branches tonight. I'm preaching to some good branches. You got a big payback. You got a... You've been wondering why I take this hit. You've been wondering why I get cut like that. You've been wondering why why have I been whacked at like that. I'll tell you why. So that you can get a big payback. So that you can get... Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's give God some praise on that. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. saying this, I hope he wouldn't, I'm sure he'll call me if he does, if he sees us, amen, I think he's on the west coast so he won't see us, he's in church right now, in fact I know he's in church right now, I was preaching a conference, uh, your pastor was there, uh, Pastor Young, he was there, but uh, Brother Wade Bass was right there, and uh, uh, Brother Wade Bass and his wife evangelized, let me tell you something, they're, 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 they're true blue go-getters, but evangelizing at that age is no joke, <laughs> like, that's stressful. It, it can be complicated. Uh, but man, you talk about somebody who puts forth their best foot. Uh, you, you're looking at brother and sister Bass. They're just wonderful Christians. And um, yes, come on, we'll give somebody double honor. And I, I just, I started preaching about uh, just serving God and knowing that God will take care of uh, your loved ones that you've been praying for. And, uh, we had an altar call and uh, Sister Bass got to pray. And now Sister Bass can pray. If, you, if you've ever been around her, you know Sister Bass can pray. But she really started praying. And she had a brother who was probably 70 plus years old already. He was lost, sinner, not in church. And she, she told her husband during the altar call, she said, wait. She said, God heard my prayer. said, yes, I'm, you know, I'm sure he did. She said, no, he heard me. He's going to save my brother. Her brother, unbeknownst to her, was at the doctor's office thinking he had pneumonia. They x-rayed him. They said, you don't have pneumonia. You have cancer. He said, you have stage four cancer. He said, it's everywhere. He said, sir, you don't have but a few weeks to live. He went home. Got sicker, went back to the hospital, picked up the phone, looked up an apostolic preacher. He said, sir, he said, I know what you preach and I know what you teach. My sister is so-and-so. He said, I'm fixing to die. He said, I want you to come into this hospital tonight and baptize me. That preacher went down to the hospital, baptized him. He came out of the water speaking in other tongues. That's a big payback. That's a big, yeah. I'm telling you God pays back. I'm telling you God... I'm preaching to some spirits from Hades right now. I'm telling you, God pays back. Come 
on, Rock Church. Come on. You've been praying too much. You've been fighting too much. You've been through too much. You've taken too many hits to not believe this. You know God pays back. You know God. Oh, come on. Let's magnify him. Let us. Oh, come on. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's magnify the Lord right now. Just for a few seconds. I feel a wonderful presence of the Lord here right now. I pray, Jesus, that you would release the gift of faith right now. I pray that throughout this entire assembly, there would be a gift of faith that would be released. I pray that the Holy Ghost uh, would begin to spark and to fire inside the hearts of your people, God, with faith. Uh, amen. With miraculous working power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, yeah, I wish somebody right now would just start clapping their hands and shouting in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Name in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in God save Ted in Jesus' name. God, you know we need a house in Jesus' name. God, you know I need a job in Jesus' name. Books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We have to identify what a Christian is, what a Christian truly really is. Now if I were to ask you, hey brother or sister, what is a Christian or what does the word Christian mean? I'm not going to ask you because I'm afraid you might tell me it means Christ-like. If you tell me the word Christian means Christ-like, all that simply means is you never looked it up. You didn't look in the dictionary or the lexicon. And my mama taught Susie, my sister and I, don't use words you haven't looked up because you might be using the word wrong. So the word Christian does not mean Christ-like. On page 672, column 1. Paragraph 3 of the Greek-English lexicon of New Testament words by Joseph Henry Thayer. He said the word Christian is from the Greek word Christianos, and it means follower and worshiper of Jesus Christ. A Christian is somebody who follows and worships Jesus, because in reality, we don't know nobody just like Jesus. Jesus Christ has never been duplicated and never been replicated. A follower and a worshiper of Jesus is a Christian. So the Bible says in Matthew 4 and 10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You serve the God that you worship. I can hang out with anybody. That's why Evangelist Green, it was a treat to hang out with you. I can hang out with anybody 20 minutes. I will tell you who your God is because you serve the gods you worship. If you worship money, you serve your business or your job or whatever you do to get money. If you worship fashion, you serve clothes. If you worship education, you serve degrees. If you worship knowledge, you serve science. If you worship your body, you serve exercise. If you worship your belly, you serve food. If you worship lust, you serve sex. If you worship getting high, you serve alcohol. If you worship yourself, you serve pride. If you worship sin, you serve the devil. Let me admonish you. Worship God and serve Jesus. Jesus is the only legitimate object of worship in the entire world. Though our sins are scarred. You have made us white as snow 
When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins.